Right, so instead of doing a standard tutorial, I thought I would just edit a scene and commentate over the top of it so you can see what I'm doing and get a feel for the way I do things. Um, I'm not a professional at After Effects, so I have a pretty basic knowledge, but you'll get an idea of how I do things. Uh, so this is the scene I've decided to edit. This guy's going to pop around the corner, shoot some rounds, and then duck back undercover while the machine gun shoots at him. Uh, so this is the first thing I like to do in my uh, videos. I go layer new adjustment layer and I put on this this is a preset filter I have which puts widescreen mode on um, I'll put a link in the description where you can download it it's part of a video copilot free pack uh, so if you want that pack look in the description you don't have to put the widescreen on at all I just really like it um, second thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a muzzle flash for you. So what we want to do is go back to our project and I'm going to import a um, automatic fire. Now I've already got one imported. Uh, this is a preset stock footage that I have from Video Copilot again. I'll put that in the description. You have to pay for it. Um, so there is a cost associated but you can do this with any muzzle flash. Uh, so he's firing his gun about here so I'm going to put the muzzle flash there. There we go, so he's going to fire that. Um, and this muzzle flash isn't actually at the right frame rate, that's why you only see one of it. So I'm going to go right click on that, time, time stretch, put it on about 80%, and we should start seeing some more muzzle flashes. There we go, that looks a lot better. So there's a few there. Uh, unfortunately, they go for. He stops shooting when they arrive. So, we can easily either put it one frame forwards, and that way, yep, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so obviously gun muzzle flashes don't look like that, it's covering the gun, that looks silly. So I'm going to press the eyeball here and turn it off, and then select the mask tool, uh, and I'm going to zoom in uh, and draw a barrier around this guy, or a mask is the correct term. Uh, and I'm going to draw a mask around this gun. You can do it pretty roughly, I'm just doing it roughly. Uh, but you can put a lot of effort into it if you like. I'm pretty lazy to be completely honest. Uh, and then cut him off. Um, there we go. So, uh, if I put this back on now, you'll see that it's only within the mask. That's not what we want. I'm going to expand this, go inverted, bang, look at that. And then it looks a little rough on the edges, so I'm going to feather it, which adds a fade. Uh, we'll put this on about 10, and you can see that. So if I deselect, that looks all right now. Look at that, bang, 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 bang. But you can see the outline of the gun here, so how do we fix that? We're going to go mask. Uh, and I'm going to move it, so we go to each frame, make sure it fits the gun correctly. We're going to basically move the mask around. Uh, there we go, so the gun is now down here, we move the mask down there. And move it again. And that looks good. Now, another problem is now you can see that when he turns, there's where the smoke is, there is now a gun outline. We don't want that either. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set a feather keyframe, move it to here and put it on about 100. And that should stop that happening. There you go. Look at that. So now he fires. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, the only problem now is that the muzzle flash is now a bit too high here. Um, so I'm going to add some transform keyframes. Uh, we'll add one at the start. Each muzzle flash basically. We just want to position it in the center of the gun. And then, of course, once again, you have to move your mask so that it, because the mask is attached to the muzzle flash itself. So we'll move that mask there. That's moved a lot. <laughs> we'll move that one there. And that is one nice muzzle flash. Let's have a look at it. 
Doesn't look too bad. Uh, it doesn't suit, it's a bit too detailed. Uh, so what I like to do is I'll right click on it, blending mode, add. That gives it a lot of brightness, but it's also still a bit too crisp. So I'm gonna go effect, stylize, glow. Uh, it's gone a bit orange, so I'm gonna go composite on top. Uh, give it a bit of radius. And there we go. Now look, if we render that, that looks pretty cool. So with sound effects, that's going to look really nice. Um, so that's the muzzle flash. Uh, very easy, very simple. Uh, let's work on the tracer fire. Right, so for the tracer round, I actually drew one in paint.net. And I'll import that for you now. See, it looks pretty ugly. Um, but I just drew it myself, so you don't need to buy anything to do these. Um, and I want it to be blue, so I'm going to go color correction, and I'm going to go to the hue, and I'm going to play around with the hue till it's blue. Uh, I want it to be blue to have a bit of a sci-fi look. Um, give it a bit of saturation. And that's pretty much it. Um, and then I'm going to go effect, simulation, glow, stylized, sorry, glow. Uh, and then you'll see it's starting to glow now, looks a little bit like a trace around, it's not big enough so we'll make it a bit bigger, press W to go to rotate tool, move it around, so that's going to start over here, um, and the way I make it look the way it does in the film is, while this guy's in cover, what we want to do is, this is the trick, you want to press this cube button, this makes it 3D. So if I click on it now, you'll see it's got a Y, X, Y, Z axis. So I'll move, I'll rotate the Y axis and I'll move it into the position where I want it to be. Make it a bit smaller. Um, accidentally pressed caps lock there. Make it smaller and it starts over here. Make it move that way a bit more. And that's where we position it. So now I go transform, position and scale. I want it to move just one frame. I just want it in the shot for one frame, so I'm going to move it here. And as you can see, it's missed completely. We want it on screen. So I'll have it here. All right. And we only want it in the shot for one frame. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to press Alt square bracket and that will get rid of it. So it's only in the shot for two frames. Uh, and it looks pretty terrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to press this button and then this one, and that makes it have motion blur. So that looks a bit more uh, blurred. And I'm going to go on here and go blending mode add. That makes it even brighter. So if we look at it now, if we look at it by itself, it looks not that great. But if we add it in motion, it actually looks really good. Um, so that's how I do my tracer bullets. Obviously, the further away it is, you'll have more frames. Mine's only in the frame for two shots because there's absolutely no need to have it for more than one shot because uh, it's so close. But from further distance, uh, you'll have it slowly move up compared to just one frame. Uh, another thing I like to do is if I parent the tracer to my footage and the automatic fire to my footage, what that will do is if I now edit this, I can go position here, press a keyframe, position here, and I'll dip it. And then if I move it back up after two frames, copy this keyframe over and paste it. Now the camera will dip when the tracer fire goes past. And if I add motion blur onto that now, um, if we play now, you'll see the camera sort of dips when the tracer fire goes past. Um, I enjoy doing that because it gives a sort of visual uh, a visual um, sort of vibration, bit of bit more movement in the camera, feels more organic. Uh, and then you can literally just press, click on your footage, your tracer, press Control D, create another one, move it here. Uh, they don't look that great when they come from the same spot, uh, but because it's 3D and this has moved, it should automatically make. Uh, it can sometimes move it a bit like that. So now the machine gun, he's firing his bullets, the machine gun's firing trace rounds at him. Um, there's two more things I want to do. So for starters, this area here looks really gross to me. It's very bright uh, and I don't like it at all. So what I'm going to do is not click on the wrong thing. I'm going to move this over here. 
I'm going to import a uh, cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a cloud. Um, I've got this picture of a storm that I've found on the internet. Uh, and we don't need all of it. We just want to put it over here. Turn the visibility of it off. And I'm just going to draw another mask. Get rid of that white area. Draw another mask here. Put it a bit over the edge for when we feather it. And if we turn visibility back on, now it looks like there's a bit of a, a storm there. Uh, and then obviously we're going to mask, uh, sorry, feather that mask. And that will allow it to look a bit more natural. Um, and there you go. So that's that. Now that doesn't look terrible and pale anymore. Um, and then the last thing to make this shot complete is I want to make it look like it's actually in winter. So there's two things we're going to do. Another adjustment layer, put it underneath the widescreen. I'm going to go layer, color correction, brightness and contrast. Now I want a decreased brightness and increased co contrast. So it's already looking a bit more cold. Um, and then I'm going to go color correction tint. Uh, now I want a bluish tone. In the to change the whites to a bluish tone, maybe a bit more turquoise. And then I'm going to set this to 25%. And now it's starting to look a lot more cold. You can see it's already looking a lot more uh, dim. And then as the last effect, I'm going to go new uh, simulation snowfall. I'm going to put this above so that the other effects don't apply to it. I'm going to put a bit of wind direction on it. I prefer to make it go right to left so it looks like they're walking into the wind. Um, and then if I play now, you'll see snow is falling and it looks a bit colder. And that's pretty much the whole scene. Let me know what you thought in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.